venue of DEF CON convention. This meeting was held in exciting Las Vegas, Nevada from July 9th through the 11th, 1999. This is video tape number 42, Walk with your Demo. Today, yeah. <laughs> I'm your DJ, Virus. All right, this is a uh, lock picking demonstration. Uh, we're going to go over a couple of things. Uh, I think we're still going to try to get some things set up here. Um, fortunately, I Courtney showed up because we've been trying to find each other all all weekend, and I was like going to go into panic mode. Uh, Courtney's going to go over uh, how different locks work and different, uh, different types of picking demonstrations on uh, different types of locks. I'm going to be talking about these. And not bother. And shh, shh. No. <laughs> we'll go over this a little bit. Actually, who in the audience right now has a pair of police regulation handcuffs? Police regulation handcuffs. Bring them up. Here. Who here? Goddamn script kitties. Yeah. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> Nobody here has police regulation handcuffs here. Negative? What's up with you guys? Are there any federal officers here with police regulation handcuffs? <laughs> I need another t shirt. <laughs> nope. Okay, that's okay. Uh, I got these from security. Don't ask. Uh, these are not police regulation handcuffs. <coughs> police regulation handcuffs actually have a small hole on the back here for doing the double lock. These have like a little funky little bar. And these are also really, really stiff. <laughs> I love my crew. <laughs> my crew rocks. Dis.org. Right on. <laughs> um... All right, a couple disclaimers. Yeah, you knew this was coming, right? <laughs> First of all, the demonstration is specifically for you in case A, a loved one locks you in and you lose your key. <laughs> or, you really want to impress your friends. <laughs> that too. <laughs> yeah, he locked his... Uh, his bag up and he can't get it unlocked, so we're just going to pick that lock for you guys later. Yeah, I'm going to pick that. <coughs> um, one thing I'd like to stress right now, uh, we're going to show you, or actually tell you, how to actually open up handcuffs. Don't be stupid. I mean, really do not be stupid. If anyone, you know, any representative of law enforcement puts you in handcuffs, do not do what I'm about to show you. That's monumentally stupid. I mean, really, really stupid. And the problem is, is uh, I gave this demonstration um, a little bit over a year ago, actually, after um, I picked the beer lock last year. Who was here and saw me actually pick the beer lock in 30 seconds? Cool. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a hard lock, too. I should have had it in 15. Um, no, sir? That bastard. No. <laughs> okay. Um, we still need to get a pair of police regulation handcuffs set from somebody. Uh, uh, do we have one, or we need one? We need set. Anyone have a set of police regulation? I've already went through this. <laughs> There's a cop in here somewhere. <laughs> no, we went. We already went through this. Um, I, I gave this demonstration uh, about a year ago, and then I found out that someone thought it was going to be cute when he was being brought in for questioning that he was going to hand the handcuffs back to the uh, police officer. And although he was cleared of original charges, he was now put up on a felony for attempted escape. Okay? Don't be stupid. All right, enough of that. So, your girlfriend locks you in these handcuffs and you can't find the keys. <laughs> and why you or boyfriend, hey, I don't know. Yeah. Well, there's some lovely women out in the audience, and they got boyfriends who are like, you know, curious. You know? <laughs> hey, you know, baby, if I handcuff you to the bed, uh, well, shit, then you can't cook me dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pay for that. <laughs> and it could be the other way around. Gee, honey, if I lock you in handcuffs, then. Um, you can't clean the house for me, like all men should. 
I got that from my wife, okay? So you know, it was like, it's your turn to clean the house. <laughs> it, was a, it was a try, okay? All right, the handcuff mechanisms are actually very simple. There's not a lot to them. Uh, part of the demonstration that I wanted to give are, are going to be very, very difficult with these specific set. Uh, we got these from security. These are also very, very, very stiff. I can tell you right now, law enforcement handcuffs aren't this stuff. Okay, police officers actually take care of their gear real, real well. The whole mechanism is nothing but a little spring pressure lock. But you can hear the little clicking there, right? And, um, boy, this is going to be fun. Let's see if I can actually do this. I'm going to have to get down into the audience here. Hold on. Audience participation. Oh, good. Come on. Follow me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we'll go around a second here. It's not my beer. Okay, um, I'm going to kind of walk through the audience and go over some of this with y'all. All y'all. <laughs> I'm actually out in Illinois right now for like six months, and I'm learning how to say all y'all. I have no idea why. Man, this is going to be fun. Inside here, the black on black that you can't see. <laughs> Can you hold the microphone? I'm going to. Okay, inside here are a set of teeth. Three teeth that look like this. Okay? What happens is, I'm just going to project and hope the mic picks it up. Just keep the mic there for the camera thingy. What happens is, is when the handcuffs come down, kind of like this, these spring-legged clips drop as they come down and then they relatch. Okay? All this is is a spring mechanism. That's all it is. Now, unless it's double-locked, the whole process is you need to bring the spring down. It's a lot faster than picking. Um, I was a 15-year professional magician and I can get out of handcuffs in about a second by doing this process. If they're double locked, then you have to pick. Okay? In the process, as it comes down, the little spring mechanism keeps it from going back up. Duh. I have the keys. All you really need is a really small, thin piece of metal. Where do you get these? Who here has seen a street sweeper? Who here has never seen a street sweeper? <laughs> the guy from Iowa. You need to get out more. <laughs> this is nothing more than a bristle from a uh, street sweeper, and they're actually perfect sized. It comes in where the uh, mechanism is. And you're going to force it over the springs. And it's going to push them down. And then this will open right back up. Nothing to it. Question is, is where'd you all go? <laughs> oh, one big blue dot now. Warning, warning would be good. And then, hey, if you really like my talk and you want your own money, remember chain shirts so wrapped into in tens and twenties. Okay, so the cushion the blow. You really were. Yeah, I was. I, I, I'm such a whore. <laughs> the problem you have, uh, the problem I had when I was a magician was, is um, where do I hide the picks? <laughs> well, that's going to be a good chunk of my talk. If you double lock the handcuffs, or someone double locks the handcuffs with you, you actually have to do a, uh, a picking process. Get yourself a pair of police regulation handcuffs, and you'll find out where the first lock is and where the second lock is. And that's all you need to know. Handcuffs are very, very cool designs because it's a small little bump in the center here, surrounded by a very, very small slot for the key to fit into. Which means is most picks, you're not going to be able to get in there. Right? Um, what I used to do is I used to get very, very thin paper clips, and I used to carry paper clips with me. And it's just the process of just sticking a piece of paper clip in there and bending it real quick, and then putting it in and running around the little circle. And it opens up the uh, lock picks quite well. Lots of practice. 
Let's go over where you're going to hide the picks. Add something? Sure, hide something. Uh, oh, add, add something. So how many of you have seen a handcuff key for one reason or another up close and personal? <laughs> There's not much to it. It's one little bump on top of this, this cylinder. Cylinder goes in, you rotate it around, that little bump does something. So simulating this with a pick is just not a hard thing as a general rule. Right. The hardest part is getting something that's that thin in there because if you look at the uh, how much metal there is there, um, there's not much at all. It's just barely there. So you need to have something that's very, very small that can fit in between because you'll find, hey, I can get into this side and then you can't go any further. Yeah. The, um, so if you just think about the lock as a logical process, there's just not much to it. They're, they're relying on tight tolerances more than anything to keep you from picking it. Hey, Karen, can I borrow you for a second? <laughs> I, I, I need a, a woman volunteer because I, I actually have to go near the, 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 the back of the pants here. <laughs> and, and Karen's my best friend, so <laughs> it'll be okay, I hope. Uh, Karen is our lovely assistant, not a volunteer, our lovely assistant. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go over where you hide picks and the different types of picks you can hide. Um, when I was doing professional magic show, I could hide over a hundred picks on, on my possession and you'd be lucky if you could find five of them. I'm not going to go over all 100, I'm going to go over the basics there. Remember, this is for entertainment, this is just Remember what I said about being stupid? Don't be stupid. What you should do is you actually get away and you have to have your handcuffs off and all that stuff and you go home and you have to watch the fight over that one for one day. I just said don't be stupid. The same piece of metal can be executed anywhere in a pair of clothing. Jeans are actually wonderful. So jeans already have a lot of contours in them, in the pockets and in the back here. That already add as a... Uh... Oh, yeah, microphone. That's okay. <laughs> no, it's for the camera. I need a wireless mic. Just keep it close. All right, like I said, the different contours... Try to pay attention and not stare at the butt, okay? The contours of the pants are great hiding places. Jeans are wonderful. The back belt loop right here you can actually sew in a, a second pocket and hollow out the top here and actually stick the pick right down in here. Right? You see what I'm saying? Because if you look at how thin this piece of metal is, it'll fit right in there. And you don't need much more than that. You just need enough to hold and actually hit that spring. Also, right in here, right in here, right in here, anywhere where there's a contour is perfect. Also, in the back of the pants here, I would actually sew a pocket here and just throw an actual key right there. Now, in all the years I did magic shows, no one ever found that key. I had like a, just a ton of metal on me and all I ever used was that stupid key. I had it there, you know, I mean, I, I figured, well, I had all the other picks in case people actually looked and found them. And nobody ever found this stupid key because nobody does this. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Down the sides of the pants, I would actually put a whole series of different picks in here. If you bend over the top here, it becomes a little wedge, and all you end up doing is having a small little piece of pla uh, metal, and you just pull straight up, and there's the pick. Okay? Another type of pick that you can do, reach into my pocket. Everybody's got credit cards. No. All right, everybody has credit card type things. Yeah. <laughs> okay, not everybody has credit cards. Um, who's seen like the little membership cards sometimes you get that are really super thin plastic credit card type things? I mean, they're, they're like really super thin. Like the hotel key? Like, yeah, like a hotel key. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> key. Or the, yeah exactly. Um, I'm going to borrow your hotel key. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I know where you're staying. Uh, one thing I'd also do is I'd take one of those credit cards and I would actually just cut a small slot in it about halfway through, about the width of uh, where my pry bar would normally be, and I would just stick that in my back pocket. And all I have to do is pull that up, bend that out a little bit, and drop it right into the handcuffs. And that also worked really, really well. Except for one time when it snapped off inside. <laughs> And then even the key couldn't get me out of the suckers. Um, any questions on handcuffs right now? Are 
you supposed to reach the, the thing down in the, the seats when you're handcuffed? Yeah, because when you get handcuffed, you're like this. You just bring it down. Yeah. You know, you can grab all the way down to your socks and your shoes. Are you doing straight? Huh? Are you doing straight? Yeah. Um, now, there are a type of handcuffs that if you get put into these, you're, you're totally screwed. They're the type that have the, not the, you know, swivel chain in the middle. Took a series of like three, like bicycle chains in the middle, and they don't twist. And what happens is when someone um, puts you in them, they put the locks on the, on the inside, like this. If they know what they're doing. If they know what you're doing, yeah. And um, uh, kick back and enjoy the ride, because they're not coming off. <laughs> also, um, some law enforcement, when they put the handcuffs on you, they'll put a plastic covering over them. So it covers up the holes here, holes here, and uh, the keys. Um, I actually had a girlfriend who had a, a little plastic thing and thought it would be cute to put them in. And um, I actually had to cut the, you know, cut the plastic off. Um, because they actually have to cut the plastic off to get to the locking mechanism. And um, those you can't really get off very easily either. You'll, they'll do that in very odd situations. So odds are really good that if they put that plastic cover on, leaving is just a really bad idea. Leaving is almost always just a bad idea. Yeah, that's a... That's a, a um, yeah. <laughs> and just sort of as a side note, one of the other things that they do is in like riot situations where they're picking up a significant number of people, they don't use handcuffs at all. They use... Uh, the cable ties. Cable ties. With a wire core. Yeah. And yeah. the only way they can get them off is with wire cutters. Yeah. And I was going to get to actually that oh, because uh, uh, one thing that will happen to you if, if you actually get put in handcuffs from law enforcement and if you think it's cute to hand them back, they will take those uh, cable ties and they'll put them on very tight and your fingers will turn nice and purple and you're up for a felony and you're very unhappy now. Don't be cute. Um, I've actually had those cable ties put on me once. Uh, this was for fun. I wasn't actually arrested. <laughs> yeah, no, no good stories there. And um, I said, put them on me like you would normally put them on because um, uh, being a magician, I actually had a lot of law enforcement friends who I would sit there and say, hey, you got anything new that I can try to get out of? And they said, yeah, here, we're using these a lot. And he threw them on there. I said, put them on just like you're going to put them on to somebody who you're going to take away. And my fingers were turning purple. <laughs> my hands were swelling up. And I'm going, this hurts really, really bad. I'm not getting out of these. There's no way because they put them on like that. And, I mean, there's just, you just, no. It just, I said, cut them off. So, um, remember what I said, don't be stupid. I've, I've had almost exactly the same experience. I also did magic for many years. Um, I would say the cable ties were the second most annoying thing that I've ever been bound by in that situation. The first was fishing line. And that was, that was bad. Don't do that. Yeah, I had four pound test tied and they said, here, step out of that. I went, poof, and it filleted my skin. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Uh, yeah, it is actually in police regulations. Uh, the back of the handcuffs, on the other side, there's a small little hole here, and what the handcuff key does, see the little dot right here? They'll throw the handcuffs on like that, and then right in the back here is a small little indentation, and they'll press in with the indentation. And what it does is it locks the spring in the up position. Because right now what you're doing is you're forcing the spring down with the pick. What that does is that locks in. There's no way to force it down. And then it's a picking process. And yes, that is actually very, very, very common. Um, and what, what you get in that position, which is actually, to some extent, a benefit, is you can't actually tighten the, the cuffs anymore. Which, if they put them on kind of loose, uh, these can cut off circulation, these can really suck. If they put them on loose and they put the stud on, it's actually kind of nice for you because it's not accidentally going to get tighter and they're not going to, to fuck around with you in that way. Yeah. Now, I mean, if you get really, really into this and want to do some cool things, some things you can do is actually dislocate your thumb and get your hand out like that. And don't do that, it's painful. I had to do that about 20 minutes ago when yeah. I came in here. Yeah, we put them on there without the key and realized it was too tight to actually use the pick and we're going, um, uh-oh. <laughs> and he actually had to, you know, do the little thumb thing. Um, it's, it's totally possible you're actually dislocating at the joint here and up here. 
is a double dislocation, and you kind of like push the thumb back into the palm, and it gives you a nice little uh, thinner hand, thinner hand about the same thickness as of, of your wrist, um, um, and it hurts. Yeah. And you're sore for like a week later. <laughs> what was that? I'm sorry. I said that was fucking nasty. <laughs> oh, hey. There are, there are worse things that you can do when you like get double jointed, where you can just like, you know, yeah. joints around. <laughs> oh, hey, here's my favorite. <laughs> You've done straight jackets too, see. Yeah, straight jackets. 45 seconds. Oh yeah, you want me to do that again? Thank you, turn. The shit I do for my art. Okay. At this point, I want to turn this over to uh, Gurney here. He's going to talk about uh, different locks, just some small interjection, but uh, let the guy work it. Uh, hand for Gurney. Want to bring the board up? Yeah, let's bring the board up. <laughs> yeah. I was hoping to have a overhead because I've got slides, but I'll just have to uh, talk about it. Yeah, no, I'm hoping for all the roll cameras and like that too. We're planning on having cameras that can actually show you the inside of the handcuffs on the big screen. If you want to talk to me afterwards, I can actually go over the process with you again. And with the clock, we should have a couple easier pairs of cuffs here and we can actually like show you just how quick and easy it is. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm just going to briefly talk about uh, picking uh, pin tumbler locks and by association uh, wafer locks. Um, let's see. Uh, it is uh, remarkably simple, actually. Uh, the mechanism is not that complicated. Uh, and uh, basically what you have in the plug here is a row of maybe, well, it could be as little as four to maybe six or seven sets of pins, uh, which in the relaxed state uh, block the core here from turning. And that's actually what happens when you turn it, that moves a bolt in or out. Um, we've got on the bottom, there's key pins, which are the pins that the key actually engages into. And then there's drive pins up top. Um, damn, I wish we had a camera, because I've got, a, I brought a cutaway with me, and you can, I've got the cutaway in my pocket. Okay, I'm trying. <laughs> Don't make it. So you have some springs that are pressing down on the drive pins. And uh, those interfere with the rotation of the plug. When you put the key in, the different levels on the key uh, lift the pins. And the, the, uh, the key pins are of all, all different lengths. And those correspond with the grooves in the key. And when you put the key in all the way, it lifts all the pins up to a uh, shooter line position, which is actually maybe the picture. No, I don't. Uh, when it's at the shooter line position, you have a nice line with the drive pins up above, the key pins 
below, and it's completely clear for the plug to rotate, so you can open the lock. Um, now that's with a normal key. When you're picking, what you do is you exploit a minute defects in every lock. Uh, the higher security locks and may be built with higher um, manufacturing tolerances, but even then, it's impossible to be absolutely perfect. You're going to have some skew on the holes where the pins go in. What you do initially is you use a torsion bar to uh, put some torque on the plug. Then you go in with a pick, and uh, in a true picking situation, you go in and individually lift up each pin. You put pressure on it, push it up. You're going to feel the pressure on the pick. And then as the pin sets, you're going to feel that pressure go away. Actually, you may even feel the pin pop. Uh, and then you may also feel a minute rotation of the plug as you set that pin. And then you just continue that process, lifting each pin up to the shear line. The rotation and the torque that you're putting on the plug will hold the, the drive pin, which is the upper pin, in the, the top portion. And then you sequentially go through and set each of the pins and then open up. Uh, in most cases, you don't even have to do that much work. Uh, especially, well, these are, uh, this, this is a quick set. Uh, door, door set with identical keys. Um, quick set is, I'd almost say, pervasive in new home builders. Um, and maybe partially because I think they do contractor keys. I don't know what all the issues are, but every new home that I've seen has, uh, it's almost 100% chance they'll have quick set on it. Um, they're like the easiest locks to fit. Yes, they're, oh yeah, they're easy, easy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'll, I'll, if, if I'm not too hungover, I'll try to demonstrate. <laughs> um, in a normal situation, especially with a cheap set of locks, you do a method called scrubbing, which is you put, use your torsion bar, put some torque on the plug lightly, use a, well, any, any pick you particularly like. I happen to like using a snake-shaped pick. And uh, you basically scrub the pins. You, you insert the pick and rake out towards you. And as you rake, it bounces the pins. And you're going to set a couple. You may set, on a single rake, you may set all of them. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've literally opened some of these on one rake. You set all the pins, and it opens up. That's yeah, that's it's hard to see, but <laughs> yeah, I don't even know if you can see it there. But it's, it's a squiggly shaped uh, piece of metal, basically. One of the really nice things about the snake pick that I particularly like also is the fact that not only is it great for raking, but the tip can also be used for setting each individual pin if I have to. It, it can be a little bit more difficult, but if I'm set up with only one pick, then sometimes this is my pick of choice. The spring steel. Yeah, hard yeah. Roll, uh, spring steel. Yeah, well, spring steel. You know, it's got flexibility to it. It's flexible, but it won't bend or break. And it will come back to the same position. That's a tension bar right there. That's a, yeah, it's a torque wrench or tension bar. Okay. I'll, I'll get to that. Now, I will talk about getting picks. Um, no. It's really not that hard. Uh, can I, can I yeah, go ahead. Get them on the internet. Yes, you can. <laughs> Why well, go to the internet? We can get them down the street. Yeah. Um, get them down the street when you can make them. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we have three different. There, there, um, my favorite picks. Uh, first of all, y you can get in trouble for carrying lock picks with you. Okay, and uh, you need to check your local laws. Uh, in some places, if you're not a licensed locksmith, um, it's a misdemeanor. And you will get taken away, you will get fined. Um, and then they'll sit there and go, gee, why did you have them? Um, my favorite pick is I usually carry a um, paper clip and my Leatherman. And I can open up any lock. Um, I just use the screwdriver portion of a Leatherman, or a Leatherman rock. 
<laughs> I used this, uh, yesterday, or not yesterday, last year, um, I picked the uh, beer, lock, uh, beer lock with my Leatherman, and <laughs> yes, his Leatherman, because I didn't have mine, and, uh, and I used um, this specific lock pick. Because I was going to do a rake, and he said, the rakes didn't work on this lock. I said, okay, fine. And I just used this. And this specific lock pick, I'll let him talk about it, is used for pushing up every individual pin. Uh, but Leathermans are awesome, because all you have to do is, if you have a paper clip, you just pull out a little piece there. You bend up the tip that you really want you know, uh, for your pick. It's, it's not great for raking, but you know, raking is faster. Uh, ind individual pins um, are just as, uh, as good, but they take a little bit longer. And then you can heat it up with a lighter, throw it in some water, you know, do a quick forge on it. It makes it nice and stiff and hard. And Okay, don't go there. And then uh, grab your leather man, you use the uh, screwdriver as a tension bar, and I just go there with the, uh, uh, the paper clip, do whatever I want, and I can actually bend that paper clip back up, put it back in my pocket, and no one knows anything. What was the beer lock? That was this lock oh, right here. Was that the beer lock last year? Okay, t tell me about the beer lock. Okay. Uh, the beer lock was, uh, it's just a freak as far as I'm concerned. I think it's a master door lock. I picked it up at Home Depot. Uh, I didn't expect to have any problems with it, but uh, it's just been consistently a bitch to pick. And, uh, it means that a positive door train. Yes, yes, yes. I, I love it. I truly do. But, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I won't say any sexist remarks. But, but um, I think it's got, I think the very last pin and the far back is really deep for some reason and it's just very difficult to rake uh, so yeah well, you, you can't rake it I haven't Hobbit we have an announcement oh, oh sorry folks uh, it would be a evil corporate bastard here uh, they're giving away the uh, Larry shirt so anybody wants to enter from the raffle last minute now the time the unfaithful will leave you yeah. <laughs> you love me more than Larry Wall right Oh well, there's one. Uh, <laughs> Kill him. <laughs> Kill him, my minions. Working for the National Security Agency. Please come see me. And I will make sure you get the information you need. So, uh, Thanks, I had, I, after, after con the convention last year, I took this home and, and I, I worked on it and I was able to pick it. So I, f I feel redeemed. It just takes a long time. Well, tell me why it was a beer lock, though. Well, I made it a beer lock because I couldn't pick it originally. Uh, you did it in 25 minutes. Hobbit, Hobbit took about 15 minutes to pick it. Now, Hobbit. If you don't know, he's a good, he's a good lock pick. He's hidden in the room if you can find him. <laughs> oh, I know where he is. I could probably spot him. Where? And he's he's made his own pick sets. He's written some good articles on lock picking. Is that usually the problem when you can't break a lock, or it's got a, a deep cut? It could be. It could be. But it can also be the pins themselves. Sometimes the pins um, are designed. Uh, not to be raped. Right. There's, God yeah. come to a lock that has double pins on each side. There's, uh, let me, uh, hold up the, I don't know if I have it. No, I don't, I guess I don't have a picture of that. I thought I did. Yeah. yeah those are even easier to pick, because you got more shear lines. Um, they do some funky things to some of the pins to make them more secure. They put cut grooves in them. They make them mushroom shaped so that uh, when you lift the pins. Uh, I want to point out a specific thing. Uh, I, I actually saw this on the Discovery Channel. You go, no, hey, don't laugh. Discovery Channel rocks, man. You can learn a lot from that damn thing. Uh, they were talking about the Alcatraz uh, Island, and uh, they had an escape attempt. Well, the main door that goes to, uh, to the outside has a special lock on it. This was way, way back in, what, the 30s or something like that, when Alcatraz was being used a lot more. I mean, think about it, way back into the 30s, this lock was very interesting. What these uh, inmates did is the overpowered guards grabbed every key on the thing and went over to the door and tried every single key. The lock was designed that if it didn't have the right key, it would disable the lock. It destroyed the lock by putting the wrong key in the first time. 
So even if they had the right key with them, by putting the wrong key in there the first time, it destroyed the lock completely. The, the lock was unrecoverable. They had to rebuild the lock from scratch. It was designed to completely destroy it, so there's no way to open up that, that lock. Um, and there's actually, if you think about, if you think that it's not being used today in certain things, you're fooling yourself. I actually got a hold of a padlock that was designed like that was a prototype, where if you put the wrong key in there and turned it, it destroyed the lock, and you had to have the lock completely cut off. There, the way don't pick those. I've, I've never seen the discovery special, though I'd love to. The way a lot of those tend to work. The way a lot of those tend to work is uh, with this. This being your standard pin cylinder, you have the chamber that holds the pins and the springs up here. A lot of times, uh, actually, probably not in the case of, of the Alcatraz lock, but I'd, I'd have to know more about it. They have another chamber over here, such that when you put the key in and rotate it. It will insert some pins up, insert some pins down, things will move around, and then when you take that key out, it will no longer work because it's got an entirely set, a different set of driver pins. And this is used a lot of times in hotels um, and various construction sites, so they can have a key that works for all of the maintenance people, and then when the maintenance people leave, they go through with another key, rotate it, and it automatically resets the lock. With Alcatraz, it actually destroys the pins. Uh, the Alcatraz book is actually called The Big House on the Discovery Channel, so if you ever get a chance to see it, it was called The Big House, and uh, I recommend it. It was actually pretty fascinating. There have been a couple of Discovery specials on, the Al on Alcatraz, and everyone I've seen thus far has been really good. Yeah. What about the medical locks? Are they uh, supposed to be I'm sorry, I, I can't hear Medical, medical locks. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll I'll probably have other people think it. Uh, they're difficult to pick because you. I believe you have to lift and rotate the pins. There are commercial picks that allow you to do that um, to lift and rotate the pins. So they are pickable, but you're probably going to spend a lot of time doing it and probably spend a lot of time practicing to get them. I've done a five-pin Medeco. I know at least two people, maybe three people, that have done um, six-pin Medicos. It takes a long time, uh, and you need to think about the problem differently. If you've gone through uh, Gurney's talk last year or the MIT Guide to Lockpicking or any of the Eddie the, uh, Eddie the Wire books, the basic approach is the same, but you need to, to change how you think about it a little bit and come up with a way to rotate the pin. Um, I don't know the math, but with a six-pin lock, you've got so many different combinations. If you've got you know uh, nine nine different heights per pin, assuming no mastering, when you add to that that each pin can be either centered or rotated left or right by 15 degrees, I think, then it just increases the number of permutations you have. Pardon? And there are fewer uh, fewer feedback mechanisms to know whether you've got the right rotation or not. So it's a little trickier. I, I want to point out something. Uh, locks are just like computer security. Nothing is foolproof. Nothing's foolproof. There's no real such thing as computer security, and there's no real such thing as a, a pickable lock. Any lock that disables itself is like a security system that actually removes itself from the network. Uh, you can get through anything. Period. I mean, uh, it. it you know, security in computers is, is designed to actually slow somebody down more than it is to actually prevent them from getting in. Same thing with locks. It, all it is is a slow down process. Okay. Um, did you want to? Yeah, just okay. quickly. Sort of adding on to that, locks really do keep honest people honest. Um, if, if you want to get through the lock, the lock is nothing more than an annoyance. Um, a lot of people fairly regularly ask me, you know, what's the best lock to put on my front door? And I would I would not say quick set, but I would yes. yeah Doberman would would be a great thing because you can put a really high security lock on your front door and people are going to who know what they're doing are going to look at that and say oh wow well, he's got a high security lock I'll just throw a brick through the window and you know that obviates the lock there's now another path into the house and you've wasted fifty bucks on exactly it. and and remember too that a high security lock does you no good if you put it on like a wood hollow door, hollow core door. Or even a metal door with an unreinforced frame. Uh, they're just going to kick it down or go through the window. So if you're 
thinking about secure applications, you've got to think about all the other methods of entry. Uh, you've got to steel reinforce the frame with extra long bolts. You've got to cover all the other areas. So we really do, it keeps honest people honest, and that's about it. Um, I'm a security consultant by day, uh, and sometimes by night, and uh, I've got a customer that is a small but growing financial institution, and at the main offices for their technical center, they've got a very sophisticated card key access system uh, with an electronic latch and a big glass door. And it turns out that to get in there with my Swiss Army knife takes seven seconds at most to, to get in and retract the lock. And if that doesn't work, I throw a brick through the glass window, there's no alarm. Because whoever installed all that just didn't think about things. And um, you know, it's, it's more just thinking about the problem and really dealing with it in a proper way. OK, I did, I did, I did find a, uh, a slide that shows uh, various types of picks. This top one is your classic diamond, half diamond pick. Uh, it's got a sharp point on it, so you can find the pins and lift them individually. The, the second shape down here, which is uh, a rake shape, you can use it for raking and scrubbing uh, or setting pins individually. It, doesn't, it has more of a rounded top. Uh, and then the, the snake-shaped rake is this guy here, and that's the one I prefer for scrubbing. If, and uh, down here is some of the, uh, the torque wrenches, either straight or with a 90 degree twist on the handle. Um, most of the sets come with, well at least the set I have comes with one of each of these. The straight ones are a little bit heavier steel. The one with a twist is a little bit lighter steel so you can bend it and adjust the torque a little bit more. Um, Let's see, buying pick sets. We wanted to hear about buying pick sets. Um, you can go down to or uh, flip open your yellow pages and look for spy stores. You'll probably find one in any large city or town. Uh, there's one here in Vegas. They probably sell a lot of pick sets now, but uh, yeah, they are. They, are. <laughs> they usually sell out pretty fast. Vegas to get picks is the spy shop. Look it up. It's yeah. pretty easy to find. And it's down near. Um, uh, Sahara and the Strip. It's not exactly on the Strip, but it's a little, uh, little west of the Strip, I guess. But it's down that, that area, the, the north end of the Strip. They're out. But they're out, yeah. Um, but, so you can go down to the spy store, cash, cash and carry, buy a pick set. They'll ask you to sign a waiver that I won't do bad stuff, and you sign Joe Blow. And you walk out with a pick set. Uh, you can also go on to the internet. Uh, there's probably hundreds of vendors on the internet. I know there's lockpick.com or lockpicks.com. You can get them up there. Uh, and then you always have the option of making your own. Um, making your own, you can do it custom, have it the way you, exactly the way you want it. I would start, if you're starting, I'd just go out and buy a commercial pick set, buy the smallest, cheapest set you can find. And because I've got a 15, I believe it's a 15 piece Majestic pick set here. And uh, hey, stop, stop showing off. I just started those two. Okay. Yeah, these are police regulation handcuffs. You can see the little dot there on the back. And uh, these are really, really nice. Uh, if that dot gets in there, it's uh, more of a world of trouble. But uh, as you can see, the process here for getting those undone is uh, pretty damn fast. Just press in, press out. Uh, you're gonna uh, okay. Back to the pick set. <laughs> they said they were gonna, not gonna interrupt me anymore. Um, Fifteen piece pick set, maybe thirty bucks at Spy Store, less if you mail order or internet probably. You get this fifteen piece set, and what it's gonna come down to is two pieces: your snake rake, if you like that, or whichever pick you prefer, and one torque wrench, torsion bar, whatever you want to call it. Um, and this is your basic set. There's also a nice uh, 
pocket switchblade style set that I've been seeing and I've been wanting to get. Very small, thin. It's got like three picks that fold out and a pork wrench in it. And that's, I don't know. Run 3495 at the, uh, at the spy shop. Okay, so you can get those there. Ah, ah, yes, uh, this is on my Christmas list. Little, teeny tiny, you can fit it in your wallet if you want. This part slides off, you pull the torsion wrench out, and then it's, I think it's got a snake and a... It's got like four or five. Oh, oh, that many, okay. Four. Okay, four. Slide that back up to lock it in. Three. And you're ready to go. Okay. Uh, the thing I don't like about these is as time goes on, they wear, and you've got a little bit of play there that can just kind of annoy you. Um, you can deal with it, but if you're just starting out, that might be sort of more than you need. Yeah. You'll find out that uh, a lot of sets have duplicate picks. So why do I need duplicates? You will break picks. Uh, there's another option. You can Some places will sell picks individually, so you could buy just this if you want. Um, just some commentary. Um, well, actually, we kind of covered it already. Um, the myth that criminals pick locks. No. They're going to smash a window. Why would you spend the time to learn a skill when you can take a baseball bat or a brick, go through a window, grab what you want, and be out of there faster, probably than just picking a lock? So, I, I, I put my personal opinion is that is that's a myth. Um, and certainly, with the security that we have on this, it's it's non-existent, so uh, it's, it's not an issue. Um, before I try to pick some locks and embarrass myself, um, some references. Uh, MIT Guide to Lock Picking is a very good reference. Uh, there was, uh, was Ted, well, Ted T. Tool, and then there was another one. Someone, someone The Wire. The Wire. Yeah. Eddie The Wire. Which I think you can probably get at the spy yes. shop. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And the spy shop and, has it too. Yes, and the spy shop will carry several books on lock picking. Yeah. But the, yeah. the MIT Guide is. And, and the MIT Guide you can find on the internet in various formats PDF, PostScript. I think disassemble is hard. Disassemble. Um, <laughs> That's against your license you <laughs> If you on the on the better locks you can you can pull the, the the whole unit out and you can unscrew the, the pinholes and dump those out and take it all apart. Actually on this side here, maybe yeah, yeah. I've taken a taken a lock apart. This is a real cheap, probably a file cabinet or desk drawer lock. Uh, it just had a small silver of metal over the top to uh, hold the pins and springs in. I just pulled that out, everything just falls apart. And uh, you can get a good idea of all the parts in here and, and an idea of how they work. And then I've lined the key up to the, the key pins here so you can see how they're raised up. Car locks. Uh, depends on the car. Uh, I've seen some cars that have double, truly double-sided locks. All your keys are going to be double-sided. You, you'll take a look at the key, and it's going to have ridges on one side and the other side. A a flat bar. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's also various ways to get into a car, too. Um, some of the cars only truly have single-sided locks on them. The, the double-sided key is just for your convenience, so you don't have to think of which way to put it in. So on the single-sided locks, they're really no more difficult to pick than any other lock, although the, the little uh, keyway guard flap is a, kind of a pain in the ass to move out of the way when you do it. On the double-sided locks, then you're getting into different territory. You either got to pick one side and then go back and pick the other side, or you can get uh, special pick sets that are double-sided. Also, with a lot more of the common locks, with a lot more of the common uh, auto locks these days, which I haven't actually played with that much, um, they incorporate a feature that is common in Medicos, whoever asked the Medico question, that we didn't actually get into, it's a feature called the sidebar. So I think, I want to say starting in 1984 and a half, 
midway through 1984, a lot of, I think it was GM cars, started using a sidebar on their higher end cars. And that just makes picking them a real pain in the butt. One more quick comment. Uh, uh, ask me later. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know a guy who, uh, we we're, were sitting at some place and someone locked their keys to their trunk and the guy said, well, you know, I, I can get your trunk open for five bucks. And uh, the lady sat there and said, okay, sure. And he grabbed a big old screwdriver, slammed it in there and turned it and opened the trunk up. And he uh, goes, that'll be five bucks. And she goes, you ruined my lock. He goes, you didn't say I couldn't ruin your lock. You said you wanted to get in your trunk. <laughs> uh, very easy. Yeah. You can also, of course, go and buy... Uh, I think they also sell for makes and models key sets. Yeah. And, you know, there's only you know maybe 15, 20, I don't know how many variations on the lock, and you can go down in the store and buy a key ring that has all the keys on it. One uh, set that you can't buy, and I forgot which model, but one one auto model you can't buy unless you're actually a licensed locksmith. Yeah. But they they also have those down at the spy stores. They'll have key sets all, also down there. Um, well, let's. Uh, let me uh, embarrass myself and try to pick some of these locks. Just in case. Yeah. Just in case. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was now in case I embarrass myself. I, w I was actually, last night I was uh, severely impaired. And uh, I was picking this guy in about five seconds with, you know, impairment. <laughs> Nope. My, my general, when I teach people how to pick locks, I'm very big on Zen and the art of lock picking because it's really incredibly easy to overthink the picking. And if you are doing something else like giving a presentation or really drunk or really stoned or uh, I had somebody that... We're never stoned here. We're never stoned here. I had somebody who um, would recite Kublai Khan to somebody else in Xanadu did Kublai Khan while picking the lock. And when you're not thinking about it, you can go through it in no time. If you're thinking about picking the lock nine times out of ten, you'll put too much tension in, you'll lift things too high, you'll just overthink it. See, I, I'm, I'm the other way around. Uh, I focus completely on the lock and I think and I visualize every individual pin and that's how I pick the lock. So you got to find out what works for you. Um, I don't do as well when I'm not thinking about it as is if I'm concentrating. Because when you're like underwater and you're holding your breath, you really need to concentrate. For whatever it's worth, he went through this lock in 30 seconds last year. I've yet to go through it, so you pick which thing it's works. It's going to be 15 seconds, but I lost that last pin. I, I did say uh, the guys at hexec.org gave me a really cool lock, and I think I'll bring that next year. And I think that's going to have to be the tequila lock. Yeah. It is a huge piece of brass that has three tubular locks on it. Oh, oh my god. You have to, two of the tubular locks have to be rotated to get out of the way of the bolt. The third one pulls the bolt back. Each tubular lock is keyed differently. Excellent. So that would be the, right. the okay. tequila lock next year. Okay. Basic question, how do you know which stretch is have a cylinder? Which way do you put the Fifty-fifty. <laughs> it didn't go one way. Try it. No, I'm serious. It, it, sometimes, sometimes depends on the lock. This one it will rotate both ways. Just it was happy and dumb and happy to rotate either way. Only one way will actually pull the bolt back. I know which way, but if you come across lock you have no idea. It's a guess. Uh, it, except for the clockwise. Yeah. Um, some of the locks that are designed only to go one way, you can feel by just putting the torsion bar in and turning it. Uh, the right way will be squishy because it's pressing against the pins. The wrong way will be a hard stop because there is a physical hard stop there, so you can kind of feel which way it's supposed to go. But on this one, which will go both ways, it's 50-50. It's
Um, just as a, a religious side note, if you have a lock and it's sticking, go buy a tube of graphite. Never, ever, ever use WD-40. If you use WD-40 and I hear about it, I'm going to come and... Kick your butt. Yeah, that. But a lot of hardware stores will sell a tube of graphite. Um, they, you know, this little tube is a buck and a half. It's lasted me about six years. You know, professional locksmiths that are doing it on a day-to-day -day basis will go through much larger things in, you know, three months. But I've been carrying this one around forever just to, like, loosen up uh, annoying locks. Like this one. Like this one. And it's, you know, it'll last a long time. Proper lubrication is your friend. In many different situations. In many different situations. Uh, graphite is, in essence, the industry standard, and a lot of people use it to lubricate locks. WD-40 is liquid and will basically get in there and mix with graphite and then cause a really nice big sludge that causes the lock basically to be totally unusable. So, you know, in theory, you could just use WD-40 but you never know when somebody's going to come along later and graphite it. And since graphite is the industry standard and actually works much better than WD-40, um, then if you use WD-40, you're just you know setting out to screw yourself later. So if you didn't do it immediately when you used WD-40, uh, and when you do graphite a lock, uh, just squirt it in there and then take the key and insert it several times, which works the graphite up in to the cylinder chambers and in between the pins, etc. How about the combination lock? Uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll talk about that. Hobbit just took off. Yeah. He had to catch a plane. Um, I, I wish he was here to talk about it, because uh, I've only just experimented a little bit with it. Uh, these are simplex push-button locks. Um, Hobbit has a great paper. It's it's complicated because the lock itself is complicated, but if you read through the paper and you have a lock in front of you, it makes a lot of sense. Um, basically, what you've got is a series of buttons. Each button can be pressed once. Uh, you can also press buttons uh, two at a time. Um, the, as you turn the knob, you feel that it breaks out. It will break out at a certain point. Um, what you're going to do on this is you're going to torque the knob to as much torque as you can give it just prior to the breakout. You're going to feel the buttons. You're going to feel for tension on the buttons. Each of the buttons is spring-loaded, but you're going to feel for extra tension. That's the mechanism inside binding, and you're going to, it's going to feel hard. That will give you an idea of which buttons are going to be in the combination. Um, you can then press in the hardest button, feel which buttons have hardened up, hardened up since then. And you go through that process, and through some good uh, deductive guessing, you can get the combination. And also, it's, it's just a matter of practice. Where's the paper? Uh, Avian.org. Uh, now it's there. Oh. Uh, if you do a search for Hobbit and Simplex Locks at your favorite search engine, it'll probably turn up. Yeah. Um, 
there's one other one. Oh, I'm glad these guys are having problems with this. <laughs> oh, of course, they're letting them. Yeah. Um, there's one other lock over here. Uh, this is a, a disc wafer style lock, and you're going to find this a lot on uh, cheap desk drawers, file cabinets, uh, any any cheap kind of locking mechanism. They're uh, in theory the same as uh, pin tumbler. They use uh, um, disc wafers of different heights to. Oh, he's done. Um, to basically work like a pin tumbler. It's the same method. The pins feel a little different, but uh, the picking method is, is exactly the same. For honesty's sake, I may or may not have just picked that. Uh, it's incredible. It's, it's loose. I didn't put it in, but let me try. It's, it's, I, I rotated it, but it may have been the entire lock cylinder rotating, so I don't want to take credit for something I didn't do. There's a pin jammed in here, so there's this one's not opening up. I'd open that, but there's a pin jammed. Uh, vibrators can be your friend, but really just do it yourself. In many different situations. <laughs> well, this one's easy to do. I'm not going to mess around. <laughs> Just it's it's too loose. It's, it's yeah. It's it's I did, mounted and they're really loose. I, I did a shitty job of mounting. Um, so yeah, you can buy uh, electric uh, pin vibrators, uh, little squeeze trigger uh, picks. Um, they work on the same premise that basically when you're raking, it's uh, vibrating and popping the pins as you put a little torque on it and setting the pins for you. Um, you can get them, but. What do you learn? You don't learn much. Uh, pick it yourself. Get a pick set. Going back to the whole pick issue, uh, my really strong recommendation is that you go to a hardware store, get a quick set or something, learn how to take it apart, put it back together, see how it works, understand how it works. From there, get the, the MIT guide to lock picking, figure out how to make a pick that works for you. Uh, the commercial picks, many people like. Personally, I don't like them. Um, I find the handles kind of annoying. The feedback isn't as good. There are problems with them. I like making my own, which end up looking kind of like that out of uh, 14 gauge DT stainless steel bike spoke. Many people use a street cleaner bristle. Um, basically, if you know the problem, then you know how to attack it. If you just buy tools, you know, what's the difference between that and being a script kitty? Um, it's sort of the, the whole same thing. I, I strongly advocate understanding how the lock works and what it's trying to do because this quick set here is a pretty standard thing. Um, we don't actually have anything terribly special here, but that, that gives you the concepts and then when you run into something like a Medico, you can see how it differs from the norm and figure out how to adjust your technique to be able to deal. And I think that's really valuable. Oh, this, oh, this one? Uh, it's, yeah. it's just a single bit. Uh, it's, it was a master. It's a Diet Coke. Yeah, actually, yeah, it ended up being a Diet Coke. Uh, it's just a master lock. It's, it's not any more secure than any other lock. It just happened to be that one was a freak. That's all. So it's, no, I'm not advocating it any secure than any other ones. Uh, you go down to Home Depot, any door set there is a cinch to pick. So you're not going to find a high security door set at Home Depot or Home Base or any of your home stores. You've got to go to a locksmith uh, or somebody who knows about secure locks. One other thing, uh, this was a master, he said. Um, what happens a lot is a lot of various locks are difficult to pick because they're made high quality, good machining tolerances, etc. Uh, it has generally been the case that the standard master padlock is a real pain in the butt to pick because they're so sloppy and they do such a poor job that it's very easy to overthink them uh, if you know how to pick locks. So learning on the, the laminated masters is not necessarily the best thing to do because you'll probably actually find it harder uh, to, to get to deal with if you're thinking about it too much. Uh, there have been relatively well-known stories about uh, a, a common master padlock that a number of people who knew how to pick locks couldn't get through. They went and explained how to pick locks to somebody that had never done it, and that guy went through it in two minutes um, because he didn't know how to overthink it. So. Um, 
there is a, such a thing as too good a lock. There's also such a thing as too bad a lock, and they both offer differing levels of security. Question? Tubular locks. Tubular locks. Uh, yeah, they um, like you see on Coke machines. Not that you would ever try to get into a Coke machine, right? <laughs> yeah, they actually require special uh, types of picks. You can pick those up. Yeah. I've seen people who have made them, but uh, I, don't, I don't know how effective homemade tubulars are. Uh, homemade tubular picks do work. They take a lot longer. There are um, semi-automated picks that can do it in you know 10 seconds, and they're pretty cool in design. The actual picking process is exactly the same as any of these, but you actually have to approach it a little bit differently. So if you go off and you learn what is necessary and what you're actually doing when you're picking one of these locks, you can sort of take that approach and apply it to a tubular lock and at the very least know what you need to do. Okay. Well, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, the presentation material that I had, which is actually the presentation from last year, uh, is up on digitaltrash.org. And uh, you can go get that from up there. On a side note, we actually have some t-shirts to give away. These are uh, dis.org t-shirts. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to ask you questions. And people who answer the questions correctly will get t-shirts. And uh, for a nice hard lock picking thing that we covered and ask a question. Uh, Uh, name the types of pins in the pin tumbler and uh, which parts they touch. I mean, which engage. Uh, tell me the difference between the two of them. That's right. Driver pins are up on top. They're Is it large or extra? <laughs> <laughs> Driver pins are up on top. Being pressed down by the, the uh, springs. Key pins are on the bottom. They're the ones of different lengths, and they're the ones that engage into the key. All right, we're going we're gonna to do an easy one. Uh, what was my time for picking the beer lock? 30 seconds. <laughs> 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 Keep him one too. <laughs> what do you want? Large or extra large? Extra. Extra. Oh wait, wait. We have a, we have a, a Dante question for you. Yes. Yeah, extra. Okay. This is the whole point of having a degree in English, so you can ask a room full of geeks questions and have them give you blank stares. Okay. In the Divine Comedy, in the Inferno, circle. Two, Canto, five. Who are the lovers in the circle of lust? Come on, it's really easy. <laughs> that is not the correct answer. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Me, Laura Lane. No. <laughs> okay, you got a shirt. Just for being smart ass. Large or extra large? Don't eat large. Don't eat large chachi, but chachi shows some other things. Chachi had issues. Yes. Okay, well, the correct answer is Paolo and Francesca. But what were you going to say? No. Yeah, that's good. Okay, it was fine. Hmm? Another question? Okay, why couldn't you mark the tools? What's the important thing to re uh, remember when you're picking handcuffs? <laughs> Get that man a t-shirt. Right there. Large. 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 Oh, yeah, here's a nifty, here's another one. What's the nifty thing I can do with my shoulders? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Give it to the guy in the red hat there. Can you do it with your back? Oh. Only once. Only once. <laughs> I can do that. All right, I've got a slightly difficult question here. That that if you hear, heard me ask this question uh, Friday in the other room, you're immediately disqualified because uh, I eventually told you the answer. If you have a door with three knobs, how do you open it? You only have two hands. How do you open it? Nope. 
Nope, no brute force. Give the man a shirt. Large or extra large? Large. The, the, the general answer is, um, if you read any of the text on picking lots, what you're going to do is you're going to take advantage of mistakes in, you're going to take advantage of mistakes in machining. So you're going to pull on the door or push on the door, depending on which way it opens, find the first doorknob that binds, turn it, push more, and then address the next knob. And if you do that, in theory, you can do it with three knobs, five knobs, a whole bunch of knobs. It just takes a while. In 4.2 in, in 4 BSD, the SEML configuration came with a wizard's password. What is a wizard's password? Come on. You guys are hackers. This got you a uh, shell on almost any Unix machine on the internet back then. Oh. Nope. Come on. Begins with Wiz. The question was, the answer is Wizzy Waz. Can anyone tell us what the response back when you type the wrong password was? Okay, what's the first? You asked me to grab it, Laundry Wizards never win. Okay, uh, another one. What's process 0 and 1 under BSD Unix? Uh, close enough. Officially, it'd be swapper, but let's say uh, current process. Yeah. What size? Got it. First time he picked a lock. All right. Witness the deflowering. Give him a shirt just for picking a lock. Large or extra large? Give him a large. Okay. I got one. He can do it. He got loaded. I got one. All right. Okay. Since we've determined that y'all can't read. I have a movie question. Okay, you have all seen The Godfather. Yes. Okay, in the baptism scene, you know, where Sonny Corleone is getting his intercut with uh, Michael Corleone doing the baptism thing, who is the baby? Who plays the baby? No! Yes, give that man a shirt. Sophia Coppola, and it was the highlight of her acting career so far. <laughs> what do you think of DOC? <laughs> All, right. All right, this is a very, very difficult question here. What's your opinion of DOC? Nope. Right there, they roll. Give them a shirt. Extra large. Okay, here's another one. What's the one thing you never put into a lock? <laughs> what? Correct. Give him a shirt. That's exactly right. If you, all locks already have graphite in there, if you just spray WD-40 in there, it will make sludge. You will not open that lock. But it's real crunchy. And it's good with milk. Okay. What are what are two of the picks I normally carry with me at all times? Raise hands only. Um, two guys are. You. No. What do I normally carry with me at all times? This side. Right. You with the green shirt, tacky thing. <laughs> Correct. Give him a shirt. Name two materials that you use to make your own picks. Back there. You got it. Bicycle spoke and street cleaner bristle. Next question has to be answered by a large person. Okay. Next person has to be answered. We need a, an extra large person to answer this next question. No, just a large person. Oh, a large person would be good. Not an extra one. Or somebody Are we out of XLs? <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, I got one. What is the fastest land animal? Raise your hand. Oh, I'm Cheetah, wrong. No, I'm right here. What? The gazelle. What Correct. <laughs> Questions. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Now, now because me and Shipley have actually done some research on this. All right. How many species of fireflies in the United States? 
More than one. 27. 13. No, you're actually close. It's 127 different species. Okay, here's a good one. What uh, what uh, medical group is actually uh, has a bounty on fireflies and is paying by the pound? No, it, it's it's a specific research group. Actually, there's two of them. So either one of them will get uh, uh, get it for you. Anybody? One of them's cancer research, and the other one would be no. AIDS, correct. Give them a shirt. They're actually using the chemicals that they use in fireflies, and they're finding out that it attacks the uh, the uh, different cells. Okay, here's a good one. Why would a female firefly mimic the flashing pattern of a different firefly? What? Yes, they will eat the other uh, other species males. Wow, well, we got firefly people. Uh, it's a good <laughs> security question. All right, here's a loaded one. Who here is willing to buy us all a beer for a t-shirt? Right there in the back row. Back row. You're obligated. No all right, give that man a shirt. He's buying us beer! Woo! Stand up now. Okay. Security question. Okay. Under Sonos. Three, two. Name at least one unpassworded account that's defaulted a system without a root password. Assist Diag, come on, these guys. <laughs> okay. Okay, here's another loaded question. What is Lady Macbeth's first name? Lady, 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 what is my favorite virus? Okay, that man shirt. Okay, why is it my favorite virus? Raise your hand. No, not because it's cold. You should know this. The the. Mm, close. It's my favorite because it encrypts the partition and that information of the uh, drive, which means that if you remove the virus incorrectly, you lose everything. Give that man a shirt. Information? Huh? Right. You lose everything, yeah. All right. What is the nastiest virus, the type, nastiest type of virus, between a stealth, polymorphic, or encrypting? Polymorphic. Polymorphic. Give him a, a, a shirt. Okay, why are polymorphic viruses so damn nasty? Raise your hand. You in the back. That's correct. They change the code every time they replicate. The Give that man a shirt. Um, is it true or false question? Raise your hand. Last shirt. Last shirt. All right. It's a large. This is a true or false question. Raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Let me rephrase this. <laughs> all right, I'm going to make this really cool. If you get it wrong, you owe us a beer. All of us. Oh, double jeopardy. Yeah, double jeopardy for the last shirt here. If you answer wrong, you owe us all a beer. If you get it right, you get a t-shirt. And you don't owe us a beer. Except for the guy back there who already owes us all beers. We're having lots of beer today. I haven't had breakfast, but damn it, I'm going to have a beer. Now I'm going to remember what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be that, uh, sidetracked. Uh, true or false? It is impossible to be infected with more than one boot sector virus at a time. Actually, you know what? I'm going to make it difficult. True or false? Windows NT with an NTFS partition cannot get a boot sector virus. Think about it. Are you all willing to buy us a beer? <laughs> Why is it false? 
You know, you have to answer the full question, though. Why is it false? NTFS doesn't have an NBR. That's not the answer I'm looking for. These are not the droids you're looking for. Yeah, because uh, every disk, um, every uh, little disk, uh, little disk has a new sector. Nope. Two beers. Sure. I can because even given some TFS, if you have a good record, but you go, the virus cannot uh, stay in memory because the TFS is good, so it's a big one. But you can have a virus and stand and infect the body that I have to spot this. That's close enough, and I'll actually explain the answer. Go ahead and give them a shirt. That was, that was very close. <laughs> with an NTFS partition drive, um, it is impossible to infect the drive with a boot sector virus because you, uh, it requires real mode access, and NT fuses real mode access with NTFS partition. But if you build a boot floppy, in case of emergency, so you can actually recover data off an NTFS partition drive. That floppy is not NTFS, it's FAT. So if you infect the boot floppy with a boot sector virus, you will infect the drive with the boot sector virus, and you still won't get your data. Everything's dead. Um, All right, so who owes his beers? Everybody. <laughs> Over here. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. I'm glad you guys made it to our talk. Thank you very much. Okay. If anyone else wants to...